I want to talk about working through our problems. Uh, husbands and wives, or if you're working somewhere with people, uh, learning to work through your problems in a godly way, I think is so important because uh, we are finding out that uh, if we walk around with grudges and unforgiveness and um, we have ill feelings in our heart towards people, uh, we feel like, well, they haven't met my expectations or I just have resentment. You know what we're finding out, what we've been studying? That can cause you to get sick. Okay, that can cause you to get sick. That can literally tear down your immune system. This is what they're finding out. And um, that's why that I can say right now, and I'm so glad that she could say that as far as her and Darren was concerned, it, it's settled. It's okay. It doesn't mean that something ain't going to happen tomorrow, but they know how to handle it. They know how to work it out because uh, there are times of disagreements. But you can't get mad at one another every time you have a disagreement. See, this is where people have got to learn to communicate and talk without bruising one another. Because we can bruise one another, okay? We can hurt one another by what we say because we know that what? Life and death is in the power of the tongue, okay? So we've learned that. Now let me just talk about the immune system a little bit. Our immune system uh, is tremendous. God has put an immune system in us, and when our immune system is strong, uh, it can detect uh, any particular disease or, or a cell in our body that is rebelling. That's what cancer is. It's a cell that is rebelling. And it can detect that and go to that cell and conquer it and, uh, and, and dissolve it and it, can, and it won't grow. That cell will not grow and catch another cell and cause another cell to become rebellious and, and it become cancerous and finally the cancer begins to build. So our immune system is so important at, that it can detect uh, any foreign uh, object within us that, 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 that like disease or anything like that and can go to it and actually defeat it, okay? And now what happens is when people begin to argue and fuss and hold ill feelings inside of them and angry and they're mad at people and they're, they, 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 they just have a, a, a bad spirit of, of just always arguing and fussing and strife and all of that is what creates a lot of diseases, okay? Now there's many other things that can cause it. Now this is what we're finding out. In this seminar that we've been, uh, we just went through, and we didn't share hardly anything, but we shared enough. Now, our immune system is important. So, one thing that I want you to write down if you're taking notes pray every day that God would strengthen your immune system. Your immune system is very important if you're going to walk in health. But you can't go around with unforgiveness, bitterness, uh, strife, arguing, and fussing, because if you do, that's going to be a factor that's going to weaken your immune system, and it's going to weaken you spiritually. Now listen to this, because if you're not right with one another, listen to this, you're not right with God. Okay, very important to understand. Now, now all this is in the Bible, and I'm, I'm just putting it out here. Now, the Bible says if we're not, if we don't love our brother who we see, how can we love God who we don't see? Okay? So it's important that we, now when I say we, humanity, the body of Christ, husbands and wives, children, that we treat others like we want them to treat us. You know, it is really so simple, isn't it? It is so simple. How do you want to be treated? 
How do you want to be treated? You treat Brother Bob just like you want to be treated. You treat your husband, your pastor, everybody. You just treat people like you want to be treated. Who wants to be yelled at in here? Raise your hand. Nobody. Who yells at, or in here, who yells at people? One honest, two honest, any more honest, three, four, five. Back over here. We've got honest people in here. Did you know, did you know that's beautiful? Did you know that I, I, I could close it down right here? Because you're open, because God knows it anyway. And I love you, so you don't have to hide it from me. Now, I want to ask this question. Has everybody in here yelled at somebody at one time in their life? Would you raise your hand? I love honest folks. Look at it. All right. So, see, we don't have to fear God in that way. Here's what we have to fear God when we're trying to hide from God or hide from, from one another because that's hypocritical. Now, there's times. Now, I'll give you an example. Uh, Frank was sharing this with me. And uh, John Hagee was, had two kids, I think it was, in his arms, and it was at nighttime, and, and uh, he was coming up to the, his uh, door, front door, and his wife was in the car. He's holding two kids, he's got his keys, and he's going to open the door, right? Wrong. You look down, there's a rattlesnake right there. He hollered at his wife, get over here quick! Don't you yell at me that way! <laughs> see, <clears throat> folks, you've got to see it from the perspective of the other person. How many of you know he yelled for a reason? So she comes over there, what do you want? Honey, just take the kids. Why? <laughs> because there's a rattlesnake between my legs right down there. Just take the kids and do what I tell you to do. Please see it from my perspective. <laughs> oh, oh, he took the kids, put them in the car. Now go in the garage and get this big round pipe I got, which I use for lifting up weights, and bring out here and give it to me. And this is snake. But see, we have to, see, understanding is so important. How many of you know sometimes when, especially people today, here's the couples that both work, and they come home, and, and their energy level is zero. And you take two people's energy level that's zero, and you put them together, and you're going to have zero. <laughs> They'll kill each other if they don't know how to have understanding to one another and treat each other like they want to be treated. You know? Now, we all make mistakes at times, but what I'm saying is if, if, if someone has a continue uh, overacting, overreacting, usually that person has deep unresolved problems and deep hurts and wounds that they need to get healed up on the inside. Okay, always remember that. Because I used to have it. And Susan could stir the coffee and it would just irritate me to death. Put the spoon down. <laughs> Anybody ever been there besides me? <laughs> See, but, uh, you know, understand and say, God, you know, to forgive, to forgive. Every day we have to forgive. Yeah. And, and, uh, and Susan and me, every day uh, we make sure, that's one thing that we should make sure that, that we are forgiven. Because, let me tell you this, because if you're not, the door is open for, the sa for Satan to put a disease on you. Are you listening? Okay, I mean, I, I can show you the Word of God. Because, see, if we don't love the person that we see, and we're saying, oh, I love you, Jesus, and we hate our brother, our sister, or we're mean to people, something's wrong. And you need to find out what it is. And usually what it is is unresolved problems that we have. Now, here's what it is. Sometimes we don't like ourselves. How many people I have ministered to over the years 
They don't like themselves. And um, they don't like others. Now listen to this. Love your neighbor as you love yourself. Like your neighbor as you like yourself. If you don't like yourself, you ain't going to like your neighbor. If you don't love yourself, you're not going to love your neighbor. Do you see that? Okay? So to learn to walk in health and to learn to be able to keep a continued fellowship with God, we have to learn to live among ourselves and love one another. And uh, don't do unto others before they get a chance to do it unto you. That's the way most, most folks do, you know. Learn to love. Now, let me see. Who, who's going to volunteer? I need a volunteer. <laughs> All right. Darren, volunteer. That's nice. All right, Darren and me, we live next to one another, right? And he has a dog over there. I don't have no dog in my yard. And there's this fence between us. And his dog's over there, and his dog's barking all night long. She knows it well, doesn't she? How long do you think I can stand that before I burn his house down? Now, if he really loves me as a neighbor, he's got to know that that is bugging me to no end. I can't sleep at night. And the dog never quits. How many's ever had a dog just constant? I mean, day and night. Man, you're calling the Air Force you, aircraft in. Come on in a little further. Bring a number. Yeah, you're getting it right in your sight. Yeah, no, yeah, go ahead and the big one. Bring the big one in. <laughs> How do you handle that without, without really, you know what I mean? And that ain't so bad because you go out in the yard and you step into something. <laughs> Susan! How did this get in the yard? I don't know, darling. I don't know, honey. And every day I go out in the yard and there's a pile of it in my yard. So one day I catch my neighbor. I catch Darren. He's throwing it over in my yard. <laughs> Jiggly shoes. How will you handle that? I read this, it, huh? How you handle it would be different than how we would handle it. <laughs> <laughs> I'll give you a little, a little story because sometimes we, 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 we say we love people. We're willing to go a, a quarter of a mile, but Come not on. a half a mile, Come on. you know. I'll tell you this little story, and I, I learned this years ago, and it really has helped me. Watchman Nee. How many of ever read any of Watchman Nee's books? One, two, three, two of us in here. But he's telling a story about uh, in China, and they have these rice paddies, and they have them sort of on hills, like, and then and they had this one guy down here had a rice paddy, and you come up a little bit on this other hill, and there's another rice paddy, and then a little high, and there's another rice paddy. Well, the guy on the bottom hill is going up, and the guy up on this other hill, well, anyway, he... He, he, he rides this like a bicycle, and it pumps the water and fills his rice uh, paddy up. And he goes in his house, and he feels good about it, but the next morning, all the water is out of his, and it's down there in his neighbor's rice paddy. And he's a Christian, and the other guy's not a Christian down there. He said, God, what am I going to do with this guy? He's stealing my water at night. No answer. So anyway, he goes out there and fixes the thing up, and where it won't go down into his neighbor's uh, rice paddy. He pumps and works all day and pumps, fills it all up again. A week later, same thing. So he goes to Watchman Nee. And Watchman Nee says, what you do is you pump and make sure that you pump your neighbor's rice paddy full of water, and then you go up there and you pump yours full of water and ask God for the strength 